I'm Ryan. And I'm Steve, and this is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. I don't know why I'm doing this with my voice. I like your inflection. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> this first ad was sent in by Jake Pantinople. I have Pantinople. struggled for years trying to figure out how to pronounce this last name. Pan- There's Pan- nothing. Pantinople. There's nothing in there that's weird, but I still struggle with it. Uh, this is on eBay. This is a Duesenberg Star Player TVTB E00105. I mean, the name just rolls off your tongue. Yeah. It's the, it's the model we're all talking about. Uh, it is in used condition. I mean, people just call it the Star Player when they yeah. talk about these. Well, I think there's a few different models. Did you, you not? <laughs> Did I not what? You didn't put the part where it says all the things that's wrong with it. I didn't put the screen grab. Oh, wait, maybe. Oh, that's kind of there. So anyway, uh, it's it's in used condition. The state is crack and the jack part has been repaired. The tremolo unit has been replaced by Bigsby. (laughs) Bigsby did it. I bet I could find that that eBay ad really quick. (laughs) Not if I find it first. Oh, Oh, shoot. It's a race. Here it is. I found it. Um, Yeah, what we're looking at here is a very classy looking black star player. Yeah. Uh, gold pick guard on there. Yep. The nice uh, shiny gold. The trim has been replaced with a big speed, which I think is odd because a lot of people love the Duesenberg. Trimmers. Yeah, it's definitely a little odd. It does make it look kind of classier, though. I do <laughs> like the look of the big speed better than the look of the Duesenberg trims. Is that weird? Because the people people no. really like how those things play and they feel great. The couple I picked up have been like, "Wow, this is really smooth," but. The Bigsby just looks more right on there in like a Gretschy sort of way. Uh, The big issue with this ad is the damage at the uh, output jack that has been repaired. Yeah. In in big air quotes there. The full thing, um, uh, it says crack in the jack part has been repaired. Tremolo unit has been replaced by Bigsby. Uh, Also, this is a vibrato unit. (laughs) No big deal. Uh, there are fine abrasions and strikes on the back of the whole body and neck. It is rod cover shortage. Does that mean there's no? That means there's just no truss rod cover, right? That's what they're saying. Oh, is it is rod covered shortage? Condition rank B, noticeable damage, cracking slash dents will, but will not influence anything used. I am going to disagree. Uh, yeah, it's missing the truss rod cover. It says it's on other EC sites. I don't understand where this is being sold out of because. It's listed in the link. Oh, this is shipping from Japan. Okay, so that explains uh, the the like it's a translated yeah uh, language source. Do you have any idea what a doozy uh, star player normally costs? I don't. I could search it real quick on eBay. Oh yeah, you're already <laughs> on eBay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a feeling that this thing is overpriced for the damage. I just don't know how overpriced. I don't know if it is i'm, I'm, gonna I'm not player. sure if this is a star player or a star player i got a bunch of special. shoes star player shoes not the starbury have you ever listened to Let's any see pod- if i spelled duesenberg right have you ever listened to any podcasts about the starbury you know i'm seeing uh duesenberg star players that i'm assuming are not in the repair condition of this like within a few hundred dollars like there's well, there's one for fourteen fifty. Yeah, I guess I see a star. A different model. There's one for eighteen fifty. There's one for seventeen twenty five. So yeah, I don't know. There's one for twelve. But I think this one with the, but this one has an aftermarket trim on it. Did it originally have? No, it would a have trim? had a Duesenberg. I I think if it's an actual star player. Excuse me. I'm a little confused because it looks like the same guitar has been listed three times. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just different photos. So there's a Star Player TV and then the Star Player Special. So if this is a Star Player TV... Oh, Star Player Special is Double Humbucker. This is definitely a TV. These are like $2,000 new. So I guess it is kind of half off. So it's about half off. Um, I think... You know, it's one of these things where maybe if it was local... I feel like I might take a chance on this. That damage is pretty rough cosmetically, but we're talking about the area around the output jack. It just looks so gummy. I wish I... Like, it looks like they poured like that black epoxy mix into right, there. Right, which is why I feel like 
if I could see this in person, I would be able to make a better call because there's a part of me that is like, ah, eh, if I could talk this down to like an even thousand and then just go to town with sandpaper for half an hour, like I would be happy with I mean, with it's those an all. otherwise attractive guitar. I mean, yeah, I don't have anything it's against it. It's got a really players. nice, like that nice uh, flame maple back. It is pretty scratched up, so... That flame maple is back there just for you. No one else gets to yeah, see that. Yeah. That's, your, that's your little secret. I don't think there's any flame on the top. I think it's just no, black, right? it's just right? black. That's funny. Star, yeah, Star Player TV. So this would have had a Duesenberg uh, uh, vibrato trend. I mean, you have to vibrato. wonder with this damage, though, like what else has happened to this guitar? Do we have to worry about other issues that come from a guitar that's possibly been dropped from a significant height? Like... The truss rod cover is off. That means someone was tweaking the truss. That's true. That's true. If this thing was dropped hard enough that someone had to fix, you know, adjust the truss, like, did the truss get broken? Like, maybe they just did the neck get like maybe messed they up just in a took way it off because they didn't like the way it looked and they lost it. <laughs> I don't think anyone takes a truss rod cover off because they don't like sure the way they it looks. Do. Oh my gosh! Not on. Not trying on to minimize bird. the Art Deco. <laughs> <laughs> this this guitar has too much art deco. What do you think about the concept of a relic Duesenberg? Because it's a relatively newish brand as far as we're concerned. I'm sure it goes way back in Germany or whatever. Um, but as far as like our impression of it as like Americans, I don't feel like I'd heard about Duesenbergs until like three years ago. I don't feel like they've been on the block long enough to see relics of them. Only three years ago? Three or four, nah. I don't know. Five? We started doing this five, five years ago. I didn't learn about Duesenbergs until start, we started okay. doing All the right. podcast. I feel like it's been fairly recent. Like It doesn't seem like the style of guitar that people would want to relic. And I'm not saying that's what someone did here. I'm, this is clearly an accident. Right. Um, but I'm seeing these little oh, chips. Oh, they do call this a tremola. Okay. Tremola. I'm tremola? seeing... Uh, you know, these little chips around the binding and stuff like that. Like maybe these will relic nicely. I, um, I'm looking at the, like the little bit of, uh, texture and a little bit of wave on that black finish as it goes up the body. And like maybe a little bit of like checking on these or something like that. So I I think, I think a legit relic. Yeah. I'm I'm not talking about doing, I'm not talking about doing a relic. I'm talking about like, like actual, like catching abuse on these and seeing how they age, you know? Right. Um, I feel like those exist. A relic to Duesenberg? Yeah. But, and so, but that's exactly the kind of, that's the kind of like, ig- you can do it, Steve. I believe that, you that's can That's the exact kind of, of relicking that you want though, is you don't want like the worn out relic look. You just want like the basic, like the weather checking kind yeah. of stuff. Like I, I think I it think would this, look good with weather checking. This black Duesenberg would look good when like. The shine is worn off a bit, and you get that kind of like old leather shoe kind of look. Like it's yeah. just a little foggy. There's, you know, like that. Like I said, the shine is worn off. I am seeing, I'm seeing Duesenbergs that are like this, that are like this rusted concept. No, that's, that's not yeah, what I'm, I'm talking not, about. Not like a trusser sort of a thing. Yeah. But mo- normally when you see doozies, they are like just shiny, pretty, brand new. Yeah. I mean, their thing is definitely like to be like you can't imagine like uh, their their bathroom shell one, you know, like having a relic on it like this. Sure. What is that called? The ice pearl. I don't know. Yeah. It just doesn't I'm not seem like a. Anything. It doesn't seem like a like a guitar build or brand that you would expect to have a relic on it all. But now I'm looking at it as this black one and thinking like I just want a little bit more of that. I don't want that gummy like epoxy poured look. Right. But, I think, uh, but a little I, bit I of like checking like, around the edges of the binding, a little bit of you know checking in the paint. I think would look attractive on that. I actually one. think the ice pearl already kind of looks relic. I guess that's true. It's kind of like, noisy. Like in, if you're close enough to it, it's obviously like very clean and like see through. But I feel like it's kind of like that's what I would um uh, that what is is what I would imagine an extremed. I mean, here's relic version. Here's that look one like. looks like with the original tremola, yeah. whatever it's pronounced as. I don't. I'm feeling like the biggest piece of visual and improvement. You don't like the skinny bar. It moves the bar up farther, up the mm. playing surface too. Maybe that's why they did it. I just know that a lot of Bigsby players will replace their Bigsby with the uh, with the Duesen. Duesenberg yeah. system. 
I don't know. You might have swayed me on this. A thousand bucks or like eleven hundred bucks or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like might I said, it'd have to be like something I could see in person and assess what how much of this bad repair job I could reverse. If it was local and I had a doozy itch, this might be a good starter doozy. I mean, you do not have a semi hollow right now. I don't. So, so I like think about it as like a starter doozy. Like starter I, doozy. I go and uh I go local. Well, do you want, I go check do you it want out. a trim for a starter? Because you could always get a star player special. You could probably get that for under $1,000. I go and I check it out. I talk to the, the seller. I'm looking at like, oh, the damage is worse than I thought it was. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. man. Would you take 900 mm. I feel like I'm I'm getting away all right with that. And then I take it to, uh, you know, I take it down to our buddy at uh, at Pitbull. Oh, are you going to try to go Hutch. to their event next now, week? I needed to talk to you about that. Uh, gear and beer? beer and Is gear? that next week? It's the 18th. Guys, beer and gear. Uh, Pitbull Audio ho- is hosting it. Go check it out. Maybe we'll be there. <laughs> I'm trying, <laughs> to, take, I'm trying to figure out how to make it. But take it down to know. Sean. Be like, hey, can you even out like this goopy epoxy mess? Yeah. And, you know, don't make it all disappear. Let it look like it's got some age to it. It got some uh, some experience on this guitar. It's just I don't. I wish I could tell. Ex- like, like I want to keep the damage to the binding, but I want to get rid of this like massive uh, bondo situation. It does look hard, but it also kind of looks like bondo. I just wish it was even. Yeah. If it, even if it was like, well, it looks looks like, like crap. Gooped it in with a spoon and then tried to smooth it out with a popsicle stick. You know. There's a big no. I think you could do a better job with a popsicle stick. <laughs> I, well, I could do a better job with a popsicle well, okay, stick. Okay, maybe I couldn't. <laughs> Fine. I've seen. Is Steve's, that what you're trying to I've say? I've seen Steve's popsicle stick work. Not great. Not great. <laughs> so, what do you think? Is you think that there's any chance you'd pay 1,100 for that? No. Oh, really? You're out at 1,100. I think I'm out at. I think I'm out at 11. I think I check this out in person and push four thousand, which might mean like dropping, like like you said, like dropping down in the nines. I mean, and coming it, back. It, a functionally, unless they really just like filled up a you know a semi hollow chamber with that goop, mm-hmm. functionally it's still a two thousand dollar guitar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you'll never be able to resell it for that price. No, but like functionally, that's what you're getting. It, Considering the neck is fine and there aren't major truss issues, like I mentioned, right? Um, and you're getting it for half off. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like there's there's a little bit of a tingle there. <laughs> I typically don't like black guitars either, but oh, yeah. black with without don't, cream binding is doing it you, for me. In you this only moment. have two black guitars. I know, and I don't. You have more black guitars than I do. All right. How many black guitars do you own? None? One. One? Oh, I guess that's not true. Oh, no, because my Ibanez was black, but I stripped that one. So. Yeah. Steve saw a black guitar, and he's like, no more. I'm going to take that black paint off. Well, some of it anyways. You ever finish that? Well, I got all the paint off. I just haven't put any new paint on. You want to do what's new? Yeah, let's what's do new? what's new, What's man. new, Steve? Am we I switched going? up the... Are we, I said we were going to talk about it. We switched up the format and led with an ad. We let, talked about it for so long. Let us know what you think in the comments. That we wouldn't mention it. And here I am mentioning it. What's new, Steve? Other um, than that everyone knows that you're a funky dancer now. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that was the uh, going away service. Bye. I posted um, a video of Steve just dancing his little Steve butt off at church this past. Uh, well, it was a, over a week ago now when this episode yeah. airs. Um. So, Check it out on Instagram. No big deal. Oh, yeah. It's on Instagram. So yeah. my church is is moving to a new location. And um, so that was our last service. And you you and your family came out. And uh, there were not as many like rando people from the past as I thought would be there, which is probably it's for better. the better. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so we're moving to a new location, which I got to check out um, this past week. And it is, it's weird. It's a weird building. Oh, really? I mean, like it's like, house it's weird? like a old, it's like an old church. Like, it's like a country church, but it's in like the middle of the, of like, 
I don't know what he's looking for the right words like to describe Central a ghetto. San Diego. <laughs> no, literally. Um, I, I looked it up on a map and it's like a few blocks away from the tower bar. Yeah. Which is like the diviest bar in San Diego. Yeah, that I love to play it because it is so trashy. It is basically halfway between the last call bar and the tower bar. Yeah. Um, and uh, we did a, a look at recent crimes in the area and somebody was shot at the park across the street from the church uh, a couple days before Christmas. That's a sad story. <laughs> um, so. I mean, you're going to shoot someone. Don't do it a couple days before Christmas. Yeah, at least a full week, please. I'd say, I'd say keep it in November. November, but then you got Thanksgiving there. I'd rather be shot close to Thanksgiving than close to Christmas. All right. So anyway, <laughs> um, it's it's a lo- It's overall, it's a smaller building, but it's also like, I guess, like maybe imagine the length of. Uh, of the Park Boulevard campus to where the balcony is. So from the back, yeah, from yeah. like the stage to the balcony. I mean, this is a lot that of inside length. baseball. Like no know, one else knows what you're talking about. So maybe wrap this up, Steve. I don't. I just don't know how to describe it. It's just it's, it's, it's just long. But I'll it's come not. Take a look at it. Steve. It's not just smaller. It's like it's skinnier. But it's like it feels long and skinny, versus like. It sounds like a pretty it's not sexy broad. church, Steve. Yeah, I mean, again. <laughs> it's uh, long and trim and athletic. Yeah. And cool in, church. And in the middle of the hood. Yeah. Where our security, like one of the guys on the worship team, his security guard is like feeling dicey about it. He's like, oh, yeah, I've worked <laughs> but that's a lot. Like, that's where that church needs yeah, to be. Like, yeah, that is like their whole it's deal. It's just funny. He's like, yeah, I've worked a lot of security in this area. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> lock your cars at night. <laughs> Which is a generally good advice yeah, if you're do in that California. Everywhere. Come on. Um, Stop risking your car. But yeah, it's cool. I'm looking forward to it. It's uh we're like cramming out the the platform for the first like service. We have like a bunch of guest musicians and oh DJ's gonna be there. Oh fun, Brennan. Yeah. Nice. Um and uh just a bunch of other people and it's just like very cramped and strange. Cool. And we have a we have a have you ever seen these uh led screens yeah like instead of like a projector screen it's like a giant television that thing's weird anyway i need to come check it out i was thinking i should come jump on the worship team one sunday come do a guest spot i want to play with sam those sam's a good worship leader i don't really guest spot a lot sam said i could come play whenever i want Uh, no he didn't but i'm sure he would (laughs) all right what's new with you ryan uh I got this bad boy over here. Is it a bad boy or is it a good boy? It's a, probably a good, good boy. I got the uh, the Line 6 Helix. Line 6, uh, they requested that I give this information. I was going to do it anyways, but they wanted to make sure everyone knows that they gave this to me. That this, oh, yeah. That I'm not going to pretend that I bought this. I'm not going to pretend that, uh, you know, like this is a uh, completely objective, you know, like fair right. thing. Like I wrote them. I said... I'm going to be doing a travel thing that I can't talk about yet here in the near future. And I think the stomp would make a really great travel like, right. recording rig. And they said, that sounds like a great idea. We're going to send one right away. So demo, demo guy brag right there. Cool. But uh, it, I, I thought long and hard about it, about what would be the perfect recording rig for this uh, travel situation. And the Helix, like, I couldn't think of anything else because I was just going to, like, bring the Nux Solid Studio. Mm-hmm. But I want to kind of, like, simulate the uh the recording environment i have here yeah. in the garage with two amps with you know mics on them and stuff mm-hmm. like that and i think this was just going to be much more like yeah. expandable I mean, you've done like some, tonal exploration sort of thing to mess you've with you've done some uh video stuff with the hx stumps before too with yeah. with uh, rj we had rj with, uh, on from teletalks uh i got to mess with his a couple times like not even on video other yeah. location shoots and stuff like that and uh i've got to mess with uh, David Hills, like full size helix oh, okay. at Sweetwater last year, uh, and I got to, I was demoed the full size helix by a Line Six guy at mm. TGU last year. So I was like, I'm familiar with the format. I'm ready to jump into this thing. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited to explore this. I'm sure there's a lot of content people want me to make with this. Now they want me to explore different things. Like the day that I they want to know if it drips, right? They want to know if it drips. They want to know how I feel about the uh, the 250 model that's in there. Um, the day that I teased that I got this 
on the Facebook group and Instagram and stuff like that. Yeah. I got like three different messages from people like sending me their drop block box links for all their presets and stuff wow. like that. That's so cool. I need to go through all those and figure out if there's any good like IRs or presets in there I need to download. Yeah. It's going to be a deep dive. I've got a lot of homework to do before I use this thing on the road, but I'm ex- I'm excited. Uh, it's been a long time since I had a, like a modeler thing. I really mm-hmm. like the format of it being small enough to be on a pedal board. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm stoked to explore this uh, new chapter of my tone life here. <laughs> so that's what I got. Uh, do we want to jump into a topic yeah, or a but, sponsorship? But before we do that, let's hit this first sponsor. It's let's Sinusoid Pro let's, Audio Couture. I thought we were doing squat. Are we doing squat? We're doing you never squash. got back to me on that. I did. I told you we were doing squat. Oh, yeah, that's right. Is, I just didn't write it down. Squatch pedal boards and accessories. It's a division of Sinusoid. Yeah. I've got mine right here. This is their older model. They have yeah. their newer designs are slightly altered from this. Uh, they have a different metal thing. I was hearing another podcast saying that thing here. they think the new ones are prettier. I don't know how it could possibly be prettier than this. Well, you know, I don't. I haven't seen. Well, I have seen the new ones. Um, I know uh, Dan Dolan. Dan is Dolan involved. is making these from Dolan Custom. He didn't uh, make board. this, but he's making the new ones. I don't know how you can say they're prettier. I guess okay, pre- prettier or subjective. But the bigger issue is what what keeps the price. Which down. one of us is prettier? Tell it's us me. in the comments. Everyone knows it's me. I had, I've had way more girlfriends than you. That's true. Um, That's true. But the thing I was going to say is what is the real piece of beauty with the squash designs is that they use woods that are uh, locally available to the builder. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's not, you know, oh, I want a board with Coco Bolo or whatever. Okay, you're not, you're maybe not going to get that, but you're also not going to wait six months for your builder to be able to have a, enough Coco Bolo or Wange or whatever to make the board that you want. Because these boards are made using the woods that are readily available to those builders. And they're, I mean, this is a great looking piece of, well, I think, I the, think maple to and me, whatever these other woods the are. The biggest selling point is that Squatch isn't a custom shop. Uh, you go on their site, you look at what's available, and you click order on that. And that's the exact board that gets shipped to you ASAP. It's, yeah, you don't have to wait for it to be built. That is the exact board, the exact wood combination. The one you see in the picture is the one that you're going to own. Right. Like there's no waiting at all. Yeah. It already exists and they're already making attractive stuff. I really like the new ones that have the black top on them. Have you seen those? I don't think so. It's got a black uh, pedal board top on it, like bound with different woods around the sides. Oh, cool. Really attractive looking. Um so yeah, Squatch pedal boards. Go, yeah. ch- go check them out. Uh, uh, also, if you order a board right now, check the date on this episode. Uh, but th- I think there's a thirty percent off coupon for one of their straps as well. They've yeah, got, they've got straps. So that go they check that out. out. Yeah. All right. Uh, this first topical suggestion was sent by. You can do it, Steve, uh, Matthew Briner. He says, "What about a discussion of dream mashups, like how Fender has been doing the Parallel Universe series?" What would be the dream design slash combination? It could be discussed regarding pedals too. Yeah, maybe. I, I think let's keep it to guitars unless you get a really crazy idea. Because mash, mashups with pedals is just like, oh, cool, double-sided collab. You know, Smash it. Smash it together. Twist it. But like, Pull it. I mean, let's, let's go down that road. Like, what if, what if guitar <laughs> brands started collabing? Like, we see parts guitars all the time. It's like, you know, like Ibanez neck on an Epiphone body right, or something right. like that. What if like, what if different brands did actual collabs with each other and mixed elements of their guitars? I mean, so I think with the Fender parallel universe stuff, you get, it's not, it's not a collaboration, but, but you are getting kind of like, I mean, right. Was it, what was the one they did? And it wasn't parallel universe. It was, Alternate. No, this year is alternate universe. Last year is parallel universe. It's, is that what it was? It's hard to get it straight. It, people um, know we're talking about. This but they year did or last the uh, was it the troublemaker telly? Yeah, which it's everyone's a telly like, gone Les it's Paul. a Les Paul. Yeah, like because it was it wasn't just that. Oh, it's a dual humbucker single cutaway guitar it's set it, neck. It it's was got flame. Pelham. Top, it was yeah. and it was Pelham blue. Well, didn't they have a flame cherry one too? <sighs> I'm not sure, but they had hum. There wasn't just the humbuckers. It was like the cream rings, yeah, and the binding, and, and even all the that. knobs and stuff like um, nodded in that direction. So that being said, 
Uh, I would like to see one of like the wilder. Um, I'd like to. Well, I mean, there's a few. Ooh, ways. ooh, ooh, uh, ooh, ooh. Yes, ooh. Ryan. I want a Gibson Modern done Fender offset style. Jazzmaster pickups, offset trim. Okay. Okay. Surf green. I think that'd be cool. Um, I was just thinking, and that I, could be Gibson I getting, like, getting uh, back at that wily Fender. I think I almost feel like everybody, everything is leaning towards. Oh, it should get the offset treatment because I was thinking, um, like one of Ibanez's like more aggro designs, like the Iceman or the Destroyer, but in like dude coral I, Iceman gone uh, butterscotch Telly. That'd be pretty wild. I'm trying to picture it. Yeah, no, that'd be cool. But I would would really want to see like a, a shell pink or like yeah. a surf green. Just surf it out. No more Floyd like I mean no Ibanez, more Floyd Rose. Ibanez could could parallel the universe themselves and they could take an ice. Oh yeah. They could take an Iceman or one of their more extreme shapes and give it the Talman treatment. Exactly. You know, exactly. with that that control hardware that's on there that's really attractive. Yeah. And like the rounder edges and that that funkier headstock. And they have like kind of done body shape mashups like that in a very limited scope in the past. Like when sure. they did the the Talman as a semi hollow, they did it as a, it was called like the Talman Art Core. You know what would be crazy? If Ibanez went just like, oh, we've got the lawyers, we can do this now. And they went. <laughs> Full retro Ibanez and just went into some lo- like lawsuit Les Paul copies. Oh, yeah. That'd be kind of. I don't even. That'd be a like with ballsy a, move with a scroll headstock. Yeah, I, they could come up with a new headstock, but like you would see it and you like, I see exactly what you're doing, right. Ibanez. Well, and I think they've nodded that way with like the Art series guitars, but are any of them solid body like Les Paul things? Yeah, I don't think they have anything like that, do they? Because they, like the art, I mean, they've got the hollow body stuff. Like I'm saying, like the Art 300 um, is kind of in that vein, but it's like a little. It's more like the ESP Eclipse, where it's like it's a Les Paulish. Surprised you know that sort of a number. thing. Um, I think it's the 300. I'm thinking of. Yeah. Um, but that's more of like an ESP take. That's what I'm saying. It's a more of an ESP take. No, I'm talking like I you know, I, I agree. Like a full on three tone burst. Yeah. To the nines, gold hardware, blah, 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 whatever. Inlays, inlays, inlays. I'm gonna look up a lawsuit Ibanez Les Paul right now to see what comes up. And that's just what we're gonna roll with here. Uh <laughs> well it's not like the Ibanez art <laughs> like even bringing back the Ibanez artist. But the thing is, is like Ibanez doesn't seem to be interested in putting out a two thousand dollar guitar that's not a shred mask. They like have a shreddy thing. They securely have their niche now. Yeah, and there's not that many people like fighting to get lawsuit stuff anymore. Like for a while, it was like a hot thing to try to track down. When's somebody gonna do a Fender style guitar? Um, I would. Yeah. No, they look freaking great. Bring that back, that headstock. Do a lawsuit, less Paul shape, Ibanez. Um, I'm not even asking anymore. I'm telling you to do it. <laughs> um, in two, in in three weeks, this guitar just shows up in the mail. You're like, <laughs> don't just, do it in three weeks. Just Ibanez. unannounced. You can spend a little time on it. No, it's just don't th- rush it. It's they're already being made. They oh. just haven't announced it. <laughs> um, so I, I, I would even, be interested. I mean, in, they've rebooted the old school logo on some of their things yeah i would love to yeah. see that on a reissue guitar um that's that's you know a less paul style thing i'd be interested in fender going like full modern so fan like a fan fret telecaster yeah like fan fret telecaster with like e- People would emgs eat, or eat something that up that'd be a, that'd be weird i'm t- i can't even picture that actually i've been wanting to do an uh, somebody somebody mocked that up in Photoshop for I've me. I've been wanting to do a parts build project where I put like a flat, flat radius neck on like a Jazzmaster body. Mm. And it's I wouldn't be doing flan, flan, fan frets. Uh, but, you know, I, I wanted to like push it in a more aggressive direction and but still have like the traditional Jazzmaster pickups and 
hardware and whatnot. I played a guitar once with flan frets. Uh, the tone of that thing was just so creamy. Sticky, though. A little sticky. Like, <laughs> it is a little sticky. <laughs> um, what are some other like obvious brands? I, I think it'd be crazy to see one of those shredder companies like Ibanez, Jackson, you know, Friedman, whoever, right. uh, to put out like a Mose Wright style thing. Mm. I mean, that's always what I've wanted. I've wanted like a garage rock guitar gone shredder. Right. Like I've always wanted. Well, it's, like, al- it's always kind of a trip because, you know, everyone want uh, everyone like there's so much demand for things to be like, pe- like period correct or, or yeah. model, you know, retro correct or whatever that you don't have like i would even just love to see like um some kind of like dan electro build with because the dan electro that you have which isn't in here and even like the hallmark to an extent i'm letting adam borrow the dano um the wait he's making music again probably not (laughs) um but like they have a a like i want to see a a mose right gone rg Right, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I would even love to see it like one of those, like that style of guitar with like a 60s slim Gibson neck on it, where it's yeah. like a flatter radius and like a thinner neck versus like, I don't, I can't even think of how, um, how thin the, or not how thin, how flat the, the fretboard is on like the, the Dan Electro. I just remember the neck being like a weird, like, thick skinny thing going on yeah it's it's like thick but then the fretboard is slim and i'm saying like it should be the it should i want it to be flat like not just a flat fretboard but also like a a, like a slim taper interesting or even like take one of those guitars and use the uh, have you played played like the gibson asymmetrical taper yeah yeah oh uh fender telecaster strandberg uh, neck (laughs) Oh, that squared off neck. Yeah, not doesn't necessarily have to be the, well, head, have the, the head head stockless. Yeah, they have the the uh, t- the Tele style Strandberg, which is just a, a treat to play. Um, but yeah, just to drop like do a collab between Fender and Strandberg yeah. and just drop that neck shape in there. Yeah, would be wild. What else was I gonna say? Probably you, something dumb. You knocked it out of my head. Oh, it was definitely dumb. It was idiotic. <laughs> <laughs> you want to jump to the next ad? Yeah, this ad was sent in by uh, Andrew Bimson. It is a Marshall Distortion foot pedal. Distortion it's a- spelled D E S T O R S I O N. Dest. Ocean. Yeah, uh, this is a uh, 15 pounds listed 57 minutes ago in That's Corby, he- England. Heavy. Um, this is a. Uh, would you pay 15 pounds for this? I would not pay 15 pounds for this because I use American money. <laughs> um, let's assume that's dollars. I think that's like $28, $25. If I, need, if I needed an, uh, an amp switching uh, foot pedal for a Marshall that this was compatible with, $15 is probably fair. You can probably yeah. order this off of Amazon for like 24 or something like that is my guess. But if it was local and I, mean, I, you know, I think it, they're like $30 new. My my issue with this. Maybe was, 40 Steve knows the price of everything. It's thirty or it's forty dollars. Everything is thirty or forty dollars, or in increments thereof. <laughs> How much is that? He cracked the code. How much is that? Uh, it's like thirty or forty. Uh, no, it's ninety. Yeah, that's just three thirties. <laughs> that was close enough. Thirties are in there. Yeah. What if it's a hundred? Uh, that's two thirties and a forty. My Thanks. my issue with this, the thing I wanted to talk about, is that when I was a new player. I would have been fooled by this and would have yeah. gone and bought it and been too like embarrassed or awkward to ask questions about it to find out that it wasn't a distortion pedal. This is the kind of thing that you end up like some kid ends up buying off of like at a pawn shop. Yeah. And then a week later takes it to Guitar Center and is like, I plugged this into my amp it and it work. doesn't work. Why aren't I getting distortion? Because <laughs> uh, you're plugging this into the headphone jack on your 15 watt crate, bro. <laughs> exactly. No, I totally would have bought this for 15 bucks if it was down the street from me when I was a kid and then taken it home and be like, wait, I don't understand. How come there's only one jack on here? Where do I, what do I do? And then spend time on the internet figuring out the mistake I had made and being too embarrassed to try to like take it back or whatever. Um, you ever think about how when you were a kid, like blowing $25 on something like oh, this huge was deal. a lot, but like now a sandwich costs $25. <laughs> 
Ace, Steve, Super Rich Steve, where are you buying sandwiches? I don't know, man. Places? Gas is 410. Steve walks in. Super Rich Steve walks into a sandwich shop, reaches in his pocket, pulls out a wad of like crumpled up bills, doesn't know how much it is, and just plops it on the counter. Like, I'll take your finest sandwich, please. Yeah, no, I just, so this is, this is how it actually goes down is I walk in and I go, one sandwich, sir. And he goes, what kind? And I go, this kind. And I just put the wad down and walk away. <laughs> and whatever they make with yeah. that wad of cash, honestly, that is, that is what I, the sandwich that I get. It honestly sounds like a beautiful way to live. Like, I want to live that life. <laughs> like, just, I would love to be at the place in my life where I walk into a subway I throw a crumpled up hundred dollar bill at the person at the register. I'm like, whatever you think I should have. And you don't want to throw it at them. That's rude. It's a hundred dollars. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, but that's rude to throw money at people like you own it's them. It's a hundred dollars. You bought your right to be rude. You okay? You were literally I saying, would... I have a hundred dollars. I own you, Subway employee. That's what you're saying. My uh, my line between like proper like society and just being it's hundred dollar bills asshole in the world is literally a hundred dollars i could oh do gosh. this tonight without ruining my life i could go get a hundred dollars and throw it at the subway let's go employee. do it let's put it on youtube no it's honestly an awful idea um, and you're right i should kindly hand the hundred dollar bill to the subway employee but anyways i i i have gone into like a sandwich like sandwich shops every once in a while and just been like, uh, and like not knowing what I wanted and be like, just whatever your favorite sandwich is. Like, that's what I want. I did that at an Italian restaurant recently. I was looking at the menu. I didn't want to get something that was safe to me. I wanted to experiment a little bit. They got you spaghetti and meatballs anyway. <laughs> and I asked the waitress, like, what do you like to get? And she went between two things. And I was like, well, I'm going to go with the one with the veal. So I got the veal. Did you go to Cheesecake Factory and ask what the chef recommends? <laughs> No, <laughs> it was actually when I was in Boston. No big deal. How many times Boston. did you listen to Flogging Molly shipping up to Boston while you're in oh. Zero times. Missed opportunities. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I looking at this pedal, I have a memory of being very young and walking into a pawn shop and being like, oh, can I try out this, uh, this boss pedal here? Mm -hmm. And the clerk pulling the pedal out from behind the glass and giving me two guitar chords. And I sat down at an amp and I plugged it in and it wouldn't turn on. I didn't know that it wasn't turning on. I didn't know that there was supposed to be a light that would turn on. I didn't know that it needed batteries. I didn't know that it needed a power supply. And I just remember feeling like embarrassed and feeling frustrated and feeling like, I don't know like how to ask what's wrong here. Right. Or like if I'm doing something wrong, or if this is broken, is this broken? It's weird to think about obviously that. Obviously, I'm not going to buy it if it's broken. And I feel like I would go through that sort of situation with this foot pedal. Sometimes it's weird to think about a time in the gear world where the internet didn't exist. Right. Also, when I couldn't like walk into a situation and just dominate with my worthless guitar knowledge of what things do and shouldn't do. Oh, <laughs> Oh, oh, you know what? We, I should. Oh, I'm sorry. I already know more than you. Please don't talk to me, salesperson. Steve might be super rich Steve in his alternate reality, but I'm asshole Ryan in mine. And maybe in my actual reality, too. That's your actual. I'm pretty sure that's your actual reality. I, <laughs> do, do you actually have any like physical like friends that you interact with physically? Like real friends? Yeah. You're Do you here? have any real friends who aren't screen names? You're here, Steve. I'm your business associate now. Shoot. <laughs> uh, you know, I we, tolerate you for cash, Ryan. I was thinking about this the other day. I, the, I throw my hundred dollars at you. I definitely <laughs> I wish you would. I could use a hundred dollars <laughs> next time I go to Subway. Uh, uh, I was thinking about this the other day. It's like I don't get to see my actual in-person friends that often anymore but i have we're this, all scattered to the four winds i have this wealth of online friends and guitar gear friends whose friendships i legitimately cherish at this point Aww. like i'm so excited when i get to hang out at pe with people at nam or tgu or if i can make it out to sweetwater or something like that i feel like they're all my real friends now you know like it's not just because they're on there they're, they're on the internet doesn't mean they're not real friends yeah. so i don't know i the reason I don't get to hang out with people in my real life 
is because we've all got kids now and it's like impossible. Like there's yeah. no time left in my daily day to like walk out the door and be like, I'm going to go see someone. I don't even have, I barely have time to go to the bathroom, you know, with kids and life and work and everything like that. So that's just reality. It depends, dude. I mean, the, the, the thing I've heard people say is like, no one ever talks about Jesus's greatest miracle of having 12 close friends in his thirties. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. That, that's where I feel like I'm at lately. <laughs> well, speaking of great friends, Ryan, uh, this episode is also brought to us by the good friends at Diderio. Oh, nice. Uh, this week Diderio. we're talking about the uh, dual lock, which is that little guy, the little thing that you got to mess around the with. little plastics? Mr. Wayne, those things right there, the, the dual lock. These are uh, cool. They strap onto your lock. These are like a more... They strap on... They lock onto your strap. They lock onto your strap. These are like a more evolved version of the, like, the Grolch yeah. rubber. Uh, it's just a little smarter. It's a little bit more intentional. Uh, it disappears into your strap because they're black. Mm -hmm. It's just the... Uh, it's the correct tool for the job. I, I used it on a strap recently. I've got that checkerboard strap. Yeah. That this, the, the, the eyelets are worn on it, worn out on it like the sleeve of a, uh, of a wizard just oh loose and like floppy and i threw these on there and it was like yeah the strap's never going anywhere with Perfect. these on getting the job done they snap on and off really easily well when they snap off you're definitely going to end up shooting this like three feet away from you like that happens that sounds like a personal problem no it's because like you have to pull on it like you pull the tension of the little thing and then pull it up off oh you push it down uh -huh. and then when it releases it like snaps loose and like flips away from you so you're gonna you're gonna nice spend a second like picking up off the ground steve is gonna test my theory here at least it shot off the guitar for me no that's the one with the big straps you're, you're running a risk here with the the harley benton oh it works this one works it's not auto lock doesn't work with this yeah he did it steve has more physical skills than me with his hands am with i other things too am i surprised his feet too he's got better feet than me you saw him boogie woogie in that video. I can't dance like that. He's that's got, that's he, accurate. He knows how to so shake uh, that check out ass. the link in the show description. Go ahead on over to to dare.com. These things are also a really cheap solution. I think how they're much like are they? four bucks, like three yeah, or four that bucks. That ain't bad to have something official. And it's got the little loop in there that you can shove your cable in and yeah. have like an actual place your cable's actually being like held in. And I can see in there's a little bit of a ridge that'll mm -hmm. like lock into your cable so it won't Perfect. slide in and out. Like I've got some of my guitars where like I can feel the cable rubbing in between the strap and the guitar body. Yeah. And it like, it's just enough to irritate me. It's not enough to make a sound, but like I can feel it happening. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, am I ruining my, my cable right now by having right. it like be under pressure in between the strap? Like that's the official way to do it with these little things. Yeah. It's, cl it's clever. I like All right. it. This episode's also brought to you by Chase Bliss Audio. Those fine folks, those great friends. Let me grab a pedal or good two. Good friends. All right. uh, Chase Bliss Audio makes a flange, a drive, a chorus, an EQ thing, a blooper. Um, they make all kinds of stuff. I can't even name them all because I'm not that good at remembering all those things. I want one of those bloopers. I don't know if it'll ever go into production because it just seems like they're adding more and more features to it. <laughs> it's like a collab between Chase Bliss and Knobs. I'm not uh, sure, even YouTube sure how channel. many of those features are real versus just things people are saying. Because, it's, because you know, like go listen to the sound samples of it. It's bananas. Like the thing makes like it's you make a loop and then you just like degrade it into mm. like bleeps and bloops and all sorts of sounds that you know Knobs is just in love with. That's the sound. So I, I grabbed two pedals. We got the tonal recall red knob there. Analog day sound, analog delay sounds for days with that. Yep. Nice and long repeats with the red knob mod. We've got the gravitas in my other hand. Uh, this is the first Chase Bliss pedal we ever got around here. And it was. It still just blew up Ryan's head with that it's pedal. It's just a classic. Yeah, you made my head explode like a scanner style. We should post that video again. Steve got to act in a video. It was beautiful. <laughs> Go check out Chase Bliss Audio Pedals. You haven't done any long form art pieces for a demo in a while. I'm going to do one soon. I'm going to do an animation soon. Stay tuned for that. Oh, yeah. I know, right? I think I heard about that. Um, I, think I, I think I know about it, but I don't remember what it is. But I, I cool know pedal. we talked about it. Yeah. 
uh, hopefully I have the time to actually get it done. So anyways, Chase Bliss pedals, uh, they make pedals more creative than you are. Yep. Go uh, check them out. Digital Brain Analog Heart. That's right. ChaseBlissAudio.com. Uh, this next topic was sent in by Daniel Corey. He says, our impulse response is the virtual reality of music. Why did I read that like I'm on my bim bam? Because <laughs> you wish you were on my bim bam. My brother, my brother, and me. It's a podcast. You guys know. should go. Sometimes to I it. love it, and sometimes I diss it. I always love my bim bam. I love those sweet, sweet McElroy boys. All right. Uh, what do you think about this idea? Our impulse responses of virtual re- 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 music. <laughs> I feel like this conversation is a virtual reality of something. You just fully glitched out on me. <laughs> There's a glitch in the matrix. Steve can't talk anymore. So is this is this like referring to the virtual reality that there is now where people put on Oculus Rift? Or is it referring to the virtual reality <laughs> of my childhood that didn't exist elsewhere than cyberpunk movies like Lawnmower? I mean, Man Oculus like Rift that? is supposed to be like it's supposed to be that i mean at least the headset portion of it i don't know i see i see people putting strapping their phones to their heads and i'm like ah that's but there's other that doesn't look cool but there's other ones where you strap your phone to your head i have not tried any and you plug a you plug a controller into it and you know you can do punching games and whatever. I feel like I must be old because I just don't have any attraction. Like if if that stuff had come out when I was a teenager, I'd be like, I got to get this. I I haven't done it. Okay, but so I just don't have any attraction to it. So the ver- this is not answering the topic at all. Um. So one thing I will say is I haven't done it, but I've heard like one of the. This is one that you would probably be super into, Ryan. Your little tycoon. Uh oh. Uh, one of the first at least virtual reality things where people were using like on their on their um, phones was a roller coaster video. Well, the first virtual reality version of that is the dad who holds up his kid in the laundry basket and does you know, like shakes. The right. Laundry right. No, but this is like TV. just a headset and it like rolls around, but like, <laughs> I, know, I know anyway. So I know <laughs> I, I talked to some people who like they, they would put it on and they'd be like standing up and whoever was with them was like, no, you need to sit down because you will. You're going to fall over. Otherwise, like, because people, it's so like close and the video is like, it's 4K. So people like forget that they're just watching a video. Right. And when the thing like turns or drops, they like freak out or they like lean into the turns. And if you try to do that standing up, you fall over. Right. So anyway, will impulse responses make you fall over? That is the question. (laughs) Um. So one of the bigger differences, I think, right off the bat, is that like typically impulse responses are well, they are like a virtual simulation. They it's, are virtual simulation, but physical you would experience. But it's like a recording. So in the case of like a roller coaster, someone filmed a roller coaster, like first person on a like used the Google car camera on a roller coaster or whatever, and turned that into like this virtual reality thing. But also with virtual reality, you have a lot of not programmed things. And I, I guess IR probably has that to an extent, like the, or at least the ability to tweak whatever is captured. Like you have the ability to tweak whatever is captured. Right. Uh, you're talking about like in, in a virtual reality, like game or something like that. Right. There's elements that are created. They don't represent a reality. They yeah, don't represent any, any kind of reality, a simulation of something that exists. Like you could invent a roller coaster exactly. or a game where like IRs tend to be recreate. There's a sample of something yeah. that exists exactly. in real life. Um, I mean, do you think we'll get to the place where? There are IRs that just exist without reference to anything that ever existed. It's just an invented IR. And like, hey, check out my IR. I like invented like a speaker that doesn't exist and a microphone that has qualities that don't exist in a room that doesn't exist. And like, this is what it would sound like. And it's useful. Like, I mean, in, I, that, in that case, would an IR be virtual reality? Yeah. Yeah. I think it would, you, you would have to be. I think it, it's a little bit hard to conceptualize what that would be, but like, you know, it's, I, I definitely think you could find ways to create, uh, impulse responses that were in that vein. I th- I think in the case of virtual reality, as it re- applies to impulse responses and guitar gear, 
you have to think about what virtual reality does is it is it simulates an experience you're having with your senses. Right. It simulates you being in a three-dimensional space experiencing something moving or happening to you around you whatever. Well then like, maybe like for for a guitar thing, let me get to it. A guitar thing to be simulating and being virtual reality, it would be more like you put your head in a dome and it simulates the direction and intensity of being in a room with an amp right. versus like, Oh, I, I'm playing this through a set of speakers on my computer and it's simulating what this would sound like. Recorded. But then that, that would, so basically what you're saying is impulse responses aren't the virtual reality. Of They're music. not virtual reality. They're, uh, they're simulated, recording situations right. where like a virtual reality would be like stepping into some sort of cabinet that would like give you the simulation mm. of being in a room with 14 Marshall double stacks, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and like feel what it's like to play an ACDC or something like that. You right. know, that would be virtual tone, virtual tone reality, <laughs> virtual tonality, virtual tonality is what we're living in. That was a sick song. Yeah, it was a good song. <laughs> we murdered it. We murdered this topic. Did we? No one else. No one else is going to be able to ever cover this topic because we did it so good. Is that you think that's accurate? Yeah, this I, is going to go. Someone is going to transcribe this and put it in Wikipedia. Uh, all right. We don't even have a Wikipedia. <laughs> Why don't we have a Wikipedia? Should We've been we doing have this a for Wikipedia? five years. Are we cool? They enough? probably have a. Remember when like every band in the world had a dumb Wikipedia? Yeah, I wrote one for us and it got deleted because we weren't popular enough. They probably have the same rules for podcasts now because there's so many podcasts and everyone thinks their podcast is so important. Yeah, I'm sure they have a Wikipedia for Marin. I'm sure they have a Wikipedia sure. for uh, my brother, my brother and me. I, they I, have a Wikipedia for every single PBS podcast, NPR podcast. But I'm sure we don't qualify for what they think yeah, should yeah. be, uh, you know, I, recorded in the annals of history they probably do have criteria though and it would be interesting to know what those are but that i suppose it's neither here i don't care uh, nor there we um, are we exist recorded online we don't need a wikipedia people if people want information they can just find it on our thing yeah that's true yeah all right um real quick a little housekeeping, housekeeping. like to welcome uh, at the inner circle level damian martinez Welcome, uh, Damien. Who I have not been able to get a hold of to add him to our actual inner circle group. Damien, but hit up Steve. When you uh when you support the show, patreon.com slash 60 cycle hum 60 cycle hum? 60 cycle humcast. Is it for the website? For the Patreon. Yeah, I think it's 60 cycle humcast. Okay. Um the uh we have different levels. We'd love to get support uh, at any level, but at the ten dollar level, it's the inner circle level. You get access to our behind the scenes Facebook group. Uh, you get demos sometimes. Uh, demos usually not early because we then, are embargoed most of the time with those. If if I've got something I've got to sit on for a day or two, I'll, I'll usually post it in there. But like if I've got something that like do not publish this, it's a super yeah. secret. I won't. Um, but I, you know, I we ep- put episodes. a lot of like behind the scenes stuff there. Uh, recently, we've been putting the Google Drive link for all the ads that we pick through for the show on there, and uh, people have been helping us pick uh, the ads they want us to cover. Yeah. in the episodes, um, you get a lot of behind the scenes stuff, and you get the pleasure of knowing that you contributed to uh, funding us going to Nam. I'm going to go to Summer Nam this year. Yeah. I'm going to do other travel uh, when we need to buy equipment. Uh, it comes out of that money. I mean, there are costs associated with doing this show. When we when we built this set in here, we ding the uh, the Patreon account to make this set so that we can continue shooting uh, the the demos and also have an attractive looking space to start doing video uh, podcast episodes. Yeah, like that money makes so much of what we do possible. It's just the reality of it. Yeah. So thank you, Damien, for uh, being a new supporter, and thank you to all of our supporters. This last ad was sent by. Uh, I believe in the UK they pronounce this name Greg Dodd, but here in the United States we pronounce it Greg D O D D. This ad, was a good joke. This Steve. ad's actually from Canada, so I'm not sure how they pronounce it there. Uh, but it's a skateboard lap steel guitar in Regina, Saskatchewan. That's a funny name. Uh, Regina. Saskatchewan. Oh, uh, <laughs> perfect Christmas gift. Custom built electric, uh, electric. 
skateboard lap steel. If the ad is up, it's still available. Located at Regina Beach. Um, there, there's a lot to like here. Yeah. It's, I know uh, you, I've seen a lot. There's of, a lot to like and a, two things to not like. Okay, well, we'll talk about the two things you don't like. But let's talk about the things that are likable about this. Uh, I mean, we've seen a lot of skateboard guitars over the years. Yeah. And this one doesn't like break the mold or anything no. like that. But I think just the all around like fit and finish and aesthetic qualities of it put it at the top of skateboard yeah. guitars, especially for skateboard lap steels. Like this is classy. It's almost so classy that it deserves to be something other than a skateboard. I think a skateboard lap steel makes a lot more sense than like the skateboard guitars I've seen. Yeah. Well, and yeah, I like obviously. this execution. I never thought about. Um, because a lot of times when you get a skateboard guitar, you get this hybridized thing. Uh, when I've seen the lap steel where they take a lap steel neck and they basically take an entire lap steel and then put trucks on the bottom of it. Oh, I hate that. Like that kind of a That's thing, right? That's stupid. So this is actually turning The stupidest a... thing about that is that like lap steel isn't exactly the kind of music that skateboarders listen to well there's that too um i mean come but on. the other thing that's actually i've played tony hawk pro skater i know what kind of there music is skateboarders no like. lap steel and tony they hawk pro skater. rage against the machine <laughs> um one of the things that's like the design of this is is kind of intuitive yeah in terms of like oh you have a skateboard and you flip it upside down and it sits on your lap like that's already a thing yeah that's already the way you put a skateboard on All your right, lap. All right, so what do you like? What are your likes in oh, this? Yeah. I like the the finish, this this uh, uh, seafoam green with yeah. the, the white stripe that goes down uh, the middle that matches the the uh, the fretboard surface. Yeah. I like this obviously custom piece of metal hardware that goes on one of the tips of the skateboard. That you got to look at the pictures of this if you're the po- if you're a podcast listener and not a YouTube watcher. Mm-hmm. Um it's this custom piece of metal that goes across the entire tip of the skateboard, giving a metal surface for the tuning keys to mount into. And I'm assuming it's almost purely for aesthetic because you could do this without, you could put the, the tuning keys in there just fine without this. Yeah. Just into the wood. And I, it makes me you know think what? like he custom, this person custom made this metal piece or had it custom made for this project, which is wild. And it fits in with this like a uh, kind of book scroll curve for the nut, which is probably a custom piece of metal too. So I'm looking at this. Yeah. The nut probably is, I'm thinking about that, um, that metal riser for lack of a, a better word. And it might actually be, um, kind of like, uh, functionally necessary um, as a riser, as a riser, because other, I mean, you could do it, no, you could do it without it, but you so. probably need like an extra thick, um, you probably need like a thicker nut because otherwise like half your tuner is just going to be sitting above the no, it's, deck. It's a, it's a lap steel dude. That nut is like an inch and a half tall. No, no, I, I, sorry, not the, I'm not saying the nut. I'm saying the, the thing that the tuners are attached to. Oh, the nut around the tuner. Oh, you're saying I'm it saying needed the extra nut, thickness. Like this, you need a, like a higher thickness nut, but th- with this, you could probably use like a standard um, so the, tuner washer. Something that is a bit of a bummer about the design is it's not just the skateboard. It's attached to this wooden thing underneath. To hold the thing, whole thing up. Oh. So there, I thought it was just on that for the purposes of the picture. It might be, but I'm betting anything that there's support wood behind this thing because the pickups are going to be sticking out through the other side. Mm, yeah, maybe it is true. resting on that just for pictures, but I don't think so. No, you're probably right. I look at this and I see a bit of wood going up to connect with it. Like It looks like a yeah. custom piece of wood made just for this situation. Like, and there's not enough wood in a skateboard to mount a tunematic bridge and stop tail on this. So You don't think so? No, I don't think so. A skateboard's too thin for that. It would, it would could, crumble I around this could break something up. You think it would crumble? They're so they're so like stiff. It's maple. Yeah, but you you need a certain depth of threading for it to lock into. I'm telling you, it would fall apart from stress. All right. Um, another thing is like the top of this thing looks way too classy for the just boring ass mm. black humbuckers they threw in here with black pickup rings they needed to go cream pickup rings or white pickup rings to match 
the white uh, fretboard and that, that racing stripe and some kind of chromey pickup in there, like a chrome humbucker or even like a super decorative humbucker or something like yeah. that. You know, something with some class and some style to it. Yeah. These, th- these pickups just look cheap on here. I agree with you. I think basically to me that entire, actually the, the whole tailpiece, the whole hardware situation uh, and the pickups kind of just smell of um, it kind of falls apart on that end doesn't epiphone it? uh like a cheap epiphone i didn't a cheap epiphone i don't think Les they Paul. needed the switch i don't think they needed a second pickup i don't think they needed four knobs i think they right. needed one pickup and two knobs that's all i you do need for like a i do like the color contrast of the the pickups the switch and the knobs all being black i don't like speed knobs on this design i would rather i actually would i think prefer like the jazz bass knob i think would fit with the overall aesthetic better sure um, the pickups, I do, I do agree. Uh, the humbuckers, I don't know. I don't know if like, they could have put those, those knobs anywhere on this skateboard body. Yeah. Like they didn't need to be all the way at the end of it. I, I feel I like don't, I, it, it interrupts the visual design just a little bit too much. Nah, I think functionally they're in a bad place, but visually I think, I think they're okay because I think, where do you think they are emotionally? Because I think, think they're in a good place. emotionally. I think visually, place? I guess I'm kind of looking from this picture. I think they kind of just lay in balance with the two, yeah, with the other end. Guess you know what this needs? It needs a, a chrome control plate, mm. like a Telecaster plate on there to match the chrome, uh, like tuner tuner peg yeah. thing. Yeah, it needs more chrome. That's just that's just the answer. Everything needs more chrome. I saw speaking of more chrome. I saw a thing. This week, where somebody asked if uh, people who played uh, Jaguars and Jazz Masters in church ever get complaints from the audience because they're blinding them, uh huh, because like of all the chrome reflecting. Yeah, I replied in. to that one. Like every time uh, I play my my Jazz Master and my wife is in the audience, I you try, try to, to blind her. I try to beam her. With wow, it. you suck. Yeah. Well, we already established that I'm a real life asshole. That's true. We did establish that this. is my real life personality. The fantasy personality for Ryan is that he's nice. Wow. <laughs> All right. Um, I am a uh, mirror universe. Ryan, this, <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> week's song was sent in by Bailey. Uh, he's in a band, uh, called Atticus Atlas. He says, um, currently in the thick of uh, recording new material, but thought we would submit our last single from October because that's the most interesting gear story. The rhythm guitar parts were recorded with the mid nineties, Japanese Fender jazz master, a 77 tele, uh, 77 Fender telecast we borrowed and a Mexican strat for amps. We ran a wet, dry, wet rig using a seventies silver face Fender champ, a Vox AC 15 and a black star HT 20 running the effects. For the, the distorted parts, it's just the Vox and the HT20. The lead stuff was done on either a 77 Fender Music Master or a Fender Modern Player Jag with P90s through the Vox and Blackstar. Uh, the pedal boards were all consolidated in a single board, so no idea what pedals were used, but the Boss RV6 and TC Hall of Fame both played a big part. Uh, overall, was probably the most fun we ever had recording guitar, despite being a real mess to set up. We're really happy with the results and are desperate to try it again. So this song is called Stay Here Now uh, by the band uh, Atticus Atlas. So hope you guys enjoy the song and check out the link below to learn more about the band. Bye, everybody. See ya. And uh, stay grounded. Stay grounded. Stay!